Hello everybody and welcome back to the YouTube video. So in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is walking you through a timeline of everything that I've learned coding since I started when I was 12 years old. So I'm 20 years old right now, I started about eight years ago, and I really just started learning using YouTube videos. My journey has been a crazy squiggly line of me trying to figure out what I liked, what I actually wanted to do when I was programming, and then kind of just experimenting with a bunch of different languages and frameworks because I wanted to and I found those enjoyable. So you're gonna see this journey is all over the place, it goes in every which direction, and there is really no focus until I kind of get into the time that I'm 18 or 19 years old. So with that being said, let's start getting into the journey, but I just wanna state that almost everything that I've learned and that I'm gonna be bringing up here, I learned through YouTube videos. Now, unfortunately, back when I was learning through YouTube videos, there was really no way for me to track exactly what I was watching, kind of the videos I had been through, and all the stuff that I had done. Well, fortunately, the sponsor of this video has a solution for that. Proteus is a free Chrome extension that tracks your time learning on YouTube. It makes it simple to find high quality learning resources and provides an awesome way to track all of your learning progress. As you acquire hours watching videos, you can earn a digital certificate in specific subject areas, and these certificates can then be added to your LinkedIn profile. Proteus makes it simple to keep track of your progress and stay on top of your learning goals. Similar to Spotify playlists, users can pack it together different videos and design a curriculum for other users to follow along with. So if you wanna start tracking your learning and earning digital certificates, download Proteus, the free Chrome extension from the link in the description. So before I go into this timeline of everything I've learned coding, I actually wanna bring us back to even further when I was probably in grade four, five, six, back in my childhood and talk about kind of the inspiration and motivation to move into this tech world. I was very fortunate that at a pretty young age, I had a really good idea of what I wanted to do. And I just had a lot of interests that really aligned well with the career in tech. And while I know back when I was in elementary school, I was always a kid who never really struggled, was you know a straight A student. It was really easy for me. I never needed to study. I'm sure many of you were that people or new people like that. And well, that led me to have a lot of free time to kind of, you know, work on hobbies, just be interested in different things, played a lot of sports. And I remember that one of my main hobbies was just trying to figure things out. I was always someone who was just really interested in how things worked, why things worked. And as soon as I got my first iPod and my first computer, these devices I was holding in my hand were just so fascinating to me. I wanted to know how they worked. I wanted to know why I could just immediately get any information I wanted from this search engine on the computer or how when I pressed that button, actually turned on the different components, how they were operating inside. And that just led me to do a lot of research into computers, into technology, and just teaching myself a lot of different things, not you know for hours every day, but in a lot of my spare time as a kid. And eventually that kind of passion and interest led me into figuring out this thing called coding. So I found coding in 2012, uh, probably in about grade eight at this point. And again, I really not had any exposure to this. I didn't have any people telling me to learn coding. I didn't have any real role models in my life or mentors or anything like that. This was just a very self-interest thing. It was just what I you know, inevitably came upon during all this research and all this stuff that I was looking into. And the first thing that I found was, you know, how to code for beginners or whatever, introduction to HTML. Now, of course, many of you won't consider that coding, but I'm just gonna generalize and say, yes, that is my introduction to coding is HTML. And I found this channel called The New Boston, which is still an amazing channel today. I'd highly recommend you guys look at that channel, but I believe it hasn't been active for like probably three, four years or something like that. Anyways, the guy named Bucky who ran this channel, uh, had an introduction to programming series with HTML. So I started using HTML um, and just went through all of these videos and I would do like one or two videos a night and just kind of go through slowly and learn all these different topics. Now I wanna be really clear, when I was doing this, this was really hard back in you know grade eight, like I'm not even very good at typing. I'm on like a really crappy laptop. I've got my phone with the video. I'm like typing it out with the video. And I was trying really hard to make sure that I actually understood everything that was happening. And I would watch the video, you know, three, four times if I had to, I would struggle through topics. And, you know, there's some videos that would, might take me days to get through just because I really couldn't grasp the concept. and I had to keep watching and going through and making sure I really understood. So it was something that I really struggled with when I started coding at such a young age. And I just wanna make that really clear because a lot of people kind of look at me and what I've done and think that I'm just, you know, this genius prodigy, whatever. I can guarantee you I'm not. I genuinely am someone who, you know, maybe might be smarter than the average guy, but that worked really hard to actually get a good programming base at a really young age. 
So regardless, started learning HTML, eventually started getting good at it, and really just started falling in love with this process of kind of learning, working hard, and programming because this was the first thing in my life that had actually challenged me and that I saw some significant progress in as I put more work in. So that led me into dealing with, you know, kind of robotic stuff and just getting more into all this kind of tech sphere at a young age. And then eventually after I started getting good enough at HTML that I could make some uh, decent web pages and stuff like that, I learned CSS obviously to style the web pages and then JavaScript. So now let's call it a year after 2013, I start learning JavaScript and JavaScript really is what got me in and just kind of pulled me into this tech sphere and convinced me that this is what I wanted to do. And that's because this was the first thing I found that was kind of a more back end thing. It was behind the scenes. It would deal with the logic of the web page and handling errors and messages and stuff like that. And that really hooked me because I'm not someone who's into design or UI or really front end web development at all. In the JavaScript, I was like, wow, I much prefer doing this than actually creating the web page itself. So long story short, learn JavaScript, really fall in love with JavaScript and making websites now that are kind of interactive. I remember the first big app I made and big relative obviously to the time was a password generator. So it literally was like you press a button, you choose a few parameters or filters and it generates you some random password and you can like view it and stop viewing it and all that kind of stuff. But I just remember being like so amazed at the fact that I was able to make that and just type on the computer and see that output popping up. So anyways, you know, time goes on. I'm now decent at JavaScript at HTML. I can make some basic web pages. And now let's say we're like mid 2013 and I actually want to make a website. I'm in grade eight and I'm like, Hey, you know, like my school's website is really crap. I think it'd be really cool if I remade that website and gave them one that was better. So I didn't actually end up following through with that, but that led me to learning PHP. You gotta remember this is back in 2013 when PHP was very alive. It was used a lot, a lot of people were using it. And so I learned PHP and started trying to deal with all this database stuff and figuring out, oh, how can I send stuff from this front end web development to this PHP backend? How can I do all that kind of stuff? So PHP did not last long in my journey. It was really hard for me. I really struggled with PHP uh, and I just never really got super interested in it. It wasn't something that um, I really liked doing. And that slowly led me to realize that I wasn't interested in actually, you know, making kind of customer facing products. I didn't like making and designing user interfaces and stuff like that. I was really interested in the back end, the problem solving, the logic. And that eventually led me in 2014 to start learning C Sharp. So I start learning C Sharp, which is a really tough language for me. This is something that's pretty hard. There's a lot of concepts I'm just not capable of grasping. It really just was a difficult thing and I never really found any great instructors online or people that I really clicked with to get good at the language. I got good enough to the point where I could make some really basic 2D applications. I remember uh, one of the ones I made that I was really proud of with was this 2D um, point plotting thing. So back in grade nine math, what we had to do is, you know, they'd give us two points and they'd say, calculate the slope, calculate the Y intercept, whatever it was in, in graphing. So I made this program that essentially could plot a bunch of different points and then it could draw a line through them and it could tell you the distance between the points, the rise over run, the slope, so that I didn't have to do all that for my homework. So that was something that I was really proud of. I hope I still have that program, but anyways, I wrote that in C sharp. And then I remember in grade nine, it's now nearing the end of grade nine. And I had heard that there's this programming competition that had happened and I really wanted to write that. This is something that, you know, this is my hobby, passion, interest, whatever. And I had missed this first year programming competition. So I went to the uh, head of the club or whoever was running this. And I said, Hey, you know, how can I write this competition? How can I get in on this next year? And he said, Hey, um, you know, what languages, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, Hey, I'm in C sharp right now. That's kind of my main thing. And he said, Oh, that's kind of unfortunate and you can't write in C sharp for this competition. So you're going to have to learn another language or just not write it. And I said, well, what's probably the easiest one to do. And he said, well, you could learn Python. You already need no C sharp. We're going to be using Python in grade 11 and 12. If you're taking my programming courses. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be doing that. So I just started learning Python. So I started learning Python and I kid you not the day that I started using Python, I just immediately fell in love with the language. And that was just because it was so much easier in almost every way than C sharp. I could just whip stuff up really quickly. I could make some really basic scripts. I didn't need to go through all the kind of tedious things that you would have to do in C sharp. And I kind of figured out that, Hey, you know, I like C sharp. I'll write in a little bit, but Python is where I want to go. And that's kind of what I want to learn next. So I started getting really good at Python and, you know, up until grade 10. And then eventually I wrote this uh, Canadian computing competition, which was hosted by the university of Waterloo. 
First year I did it, I did okay, probably middle of the pack, nothing to write home about. Uh, and it was way harder than I was expecting it to be. And I kind of realized, I'm like, oh, these are like really difficult problems. And this isn't just programming, there's actually a ton of math and problem solving that goes into this. So I said, hey, you know what, next year I wanna come back and write this again, and hopefully I can do better. So I actually did some more real preparation, did some programming problems and stuff like that. And then in grade 11, I wrote this competition, did quite well, and I think I was actually the top in my school, at least for the age range that I was in at that time. So that gave me a lot of motivation. I was like, hey, you know, like I'm actually pretty good at this. This is something I could do for a living. This might kind of be the direction I wanna go in. And that's kind of when I made the decision in grade 11 and 12. So that would be for me, I guess, 2016, 2017, that this is what I wanna do. And this is kind of, you know, what I'm aiming for in my life, essentially. So obviously really early, fortunate to know that at my age, but that's pretty much what happened. So grade 11, 12 go by, I take the uh, computing classes that we have at our high school, which are just teaching stuff in Python and introducing us to Pygame, which is a 2D module to make like little graphical games and stuff. Started using Pygame, really fell in love with Pygame because I could make a ton of different cool apps. I can make games. That's how I made my big golf game that some of you may have seen as my first programming project or whatever uh, that I put on my channel uh, probably a month or two ago, something like that. But regardless, get through, uh, get through high school in grade 12. Now I'm pretty good at programming. I've been programming in Python for about three years. I know some C Sharp, JavaScript, PHP, HTML, and I get to university. So I enroll in computer science. I go to the University of Ottawa, as many of you know, and then I take my Introduction to Computing 1 course. So in the meantime, while this was happening, I believe actually at the end of grade 11, I had started my YouTube channel, which had just given me even more time to really focus on programming and teach programming online. So that YouTube channel started almost three and a half years ago, three years ago, something like that. Anyways, again to first year university, I'm taking my introduction to computing courses and all my mandatory first year courses. They're just really easy for me. I'm not really struggling and I have a ton of time to work on my YouTube channel and learn a lot more programming. So I really dial in on Python. I start learning a ton of machine learning and AI. So I'm dealing with TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, you know, all those popular modules. And then I start working with things like Kivi and PyQt5 and just really getting a good kind of foundation in Python and a good, um, I don't even know, a variety of different modules and things that I can do with it. Now here comes second semester of first year. So this is in 2018. And now we have introduction to computing two, which is taught in Java. So now new language coming up on the board here in 2018, Java, something I've never used before, similar enough to languages that I knew like C sharp, but again, a new thing. So I start learning Java, get quite good at Java, spend pretty much my whole Christmas break just prepping for that course and making sure that I really know Java well before I hop in there, do really well in that Java course. And then the whole summer after that, I worked as a STEM program coordinator at a summer camp where I pretty much just use Python the entire time. And then I come back to second year university. Now we're in 2019. And the first semester of second year, I am in a I believe it is a software engineering course and we're actually making an Android app as our final project in that course. So that leads me to learn about Android development, to start getting in and learning about Kotlin and Java and all that and stuff you can do with making apps. That was really cool. Then I had my introduction to uh, databases or databases or however you say that. So I've learned SQL. And then I got into another programming course. I don't know the name of this. I think it was programming paradigms or something like that. And in that course, we actually learned three different programming languages. So we learned Golang, we learned Scheme, and we learned Prolog. I know many of you probably don't know Scheme or Prolog, or if you do, you are probably older than I am. Regardless, we learned those languages. I really fell in love with Golang when I started learning that because it was super fast, it had concurrency control, it was pretty similar to Python, it was a typed language, blah, 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 all that stuff. So I get into Golang, start teaching that on the YouTube channel, and then now, after all of that, we're in the summer of second year, so pretty much right now, and the only net new language that I'm learning is Dart. So the reason I'm learning Dart is because I'm making a Flutter application right now, and I'm teaching that on the YouTube channel, as you guys probably have seen. So that uses a language called Dart, which I believe is designed and developed by Google. And now we need to talk about my Microsoft internship where I learned TypeScript and React. So now we're at the point, right, where it's this year, it's 2020, and I have this internship at Microsoft that I'm doing. So I get that job. I accidentally skipped over some stuff here with the Dart and Flutter stuff. Ignore that, but let's let's move back a few months. So, you know, beginning of 2020, 
I get this internship at Microsoft. I'm working on the Python AI tools team. So I'm doing the Python extension for Visual Studio Code. Within that extension, I'm working on data science related features. And while pretty much all of those features in the extension for VS Code are written in TypeScript. So I've never used TypeScript before, but I know JavaScript. So it's kind of a good introduction to TypeScript. I hop into Microsoft, start working in that code base, really get familiar with TypeScript and React, which are kind of the frameworks we're using. Then there's some Redux in there that I need to learn. And yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing this summer is you know learning TypeScript, React, Redux, and writing code for Microsoft with that. So I kind of skipped over some things at the end because it got really close to the current date, uh, but hopefully that gives you an idea of everything that I've learned programming. So to go through a quick summary, I have a list here. I'm just gonna walk through all of them in case I confused any of you. We started with HTML, then JavaScript, then PHP, C Sharp, Python, a bunch of modules and stuff in Python. I spent pretty much two or three years just solely using Python. Then I learned Java, then we learned some Android development. Then we I learned SQL, which I guess you can't really consider that a programming language, but you get the point. And then Golang, Prolog, Scheme, and then I learned TypeScript, uh, React, Redux, which are frameworks, obviously, and then Dart for the use in a Flutter application. So that is kind of my timeline and story learning to code. There's a lot more I could go into. I could literally spend hours talking about this journey and this story because I remember it so vividly and it's something that I think is really cool and I always like to share. But with that being said, I think I'm going to end the video here. So if you guys enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, I will see you again in another YouTube video.